The Dark Ages just got a lot brighter. Crusader Kings 2 is baked. Since YouTube has apparently devolved into a cesspool of copyright complaints and complaint against copyrights, I feel it appropriate to bring up one of the darkest periods in human history, the medieval era. Yeah, I was never good at transitions. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Sorry, couldn't help myself. After a particularly obscure and strange little empire called Rome was taken over by invading barbarian tribes, the whole of Europe was flung into a time of great turmoil and stagnant innovation that later came to be known as the Dark Ages. It's presumably referred to as Dark because of how little we know about this period relative to those before and after. But, despite what the powers that be may tell you, I think we all know the real reason why it's referred to as such. That's right, ignorant human. It was when we were invaded and forced into slavery by our 30-foot-tall Neko alien overlords. Sponsored by the Wonder Social Streamer of Cats Foundation. Yet. According to theories that have much more evidence slash proof, it was predominantly characterized by the very constructive spread of organized religion and feudal systems across all of Eurasia. Besides the constant warfare and the occasional plague ending millions of lives. Okay. So it actually really sucked. It sounded much better in my head, people. Gosh. Perhaps the time period we associate most of how the Middle Ages worked happened between the mid-11th and 15th centuries, which just so happens to be the timeline in which the base game of Crusader Kings 2 is set in. But we'll get to that later. Right now, I shall serenade you with my limitless archives of historical knowledge pertaining to incredible countries such as the Holy Roman Empire, France, and the Sulamids. I can just feel the excitement in your breath. So, without further ado, let's begin by... Wait, I wasn't finished. Please, just one more... Stop it! Okay, fine. Be that way, you stupid, ugly... Crusader Kings 2, developed by Paradox Interactive, is the successor to the first Crusader Kings. I really hope that's not news to you. I don't know anything about the first Crusader Kings, but I'm obviously familiar with the second. CK2 also continues Paradox's tradition of making a particular genre of games under the umbrella of Grand Strategy. Grand Strategy basically is characterized by a lot of forethought before making decisions and an interface similar to that of a game board. Crusader Kings 2 is definitely like that. To prove it to you, let's jump right into the actual game. And you know what that means, kids. My invisible leg. Yeah. Blue, you goddamn useless. Traitorous. When I enter the game, I notice the faint hums of a tense melody playing until it suddenly explodes into a hailstorm of beautiful awesomeness. I arrive at the menu, with Europe and surrounding areas taking center stage in a three-dimensional map. I'm excited to start playing the game, 
so I grab my mouse and violently crush the start button with my cursor. I get the option to choose a start date. I choose 1066. Then I get to choose a character, presumably one of those suggested to you. So I choose you, Kaiser Heinrich of the Holy Roman Empire. I start the game, and I'm flown directly into the center of Europe. I am overwhelmed by a cacophony of tabs, buttons, alerts, names, and graphics. But I learned all these controls, and will be able to explain to you, with the most accuracy possible, the true quality of Crusader Kings 2. You know what that means. The review starts now. Let's get cooking. The main gist of the game is controlling a specific character between 1066 and 1444 and doing, well, whatever the hell you want with that nation that character controls. You do this by either using the mouse to interact with the map and interface, or the various hotkeys for the more well acclimated players. Now, before we go any further, I must state the white elephant in the room. For players new to the series, especially those unfamiliar with grand strategy in general, CK2 is horrifyingly complex. While there is a tutorial, it sadly fails to explain all the smaller parts of the gameplay that will make or break your fledgling nation. That being said, the controls all have their obvious purposes and are very comprehensive in terms of covering what you should expect if you actually were a leader of one of these countries, with things relatively dumbed down, of course. You feel very immersed in the world, and get the feeling that devs actually care about their final product. On the topic of what you actually do in the game, most players are going to try and conquer the world in the time frame allotted, or overthrow their associated liege lords. Depending on the personality, interpersonal politics, and general standing of your darting character, trying to conquer as much as possible is easier said than done. There's a clusterfuck of endgame functions I haven't even touched upon yet. The main thing you must know is that there's a high learning curve, but once you get over it, you'll find the game to be a uniquely fulfilling experience that will last a long time afterwards. I give this section an overall good rating. I am a sucker for historical games, so when I went headfirst into CK2 expecting the most accuracy possible from a game since this time period, I am happy to say that I was not disappointed. The personal histories and conflicts of the various in-game characters are fully realized setting the stage for the interesting alternate timelines that are sure to transpire from your various decisions. I must mention something important that you'll experience if they're playing a certain character for some time. You start to connect with them on a personal level. The highs and lows of their noble career will be forever embedded in your soul. Their life will be your life, and their death will be your death. So, moving on with... I... Oh, forget this! Donovan O'Brien! Come back to me! <laughs> okay. Maybe it's not that bad. But the point still stands that you'll be very immersed in the story you start with and the one you create by playing the game. In fact, it's one of the few strategy games where I felt this way. It's one thing to make a great strategy game, but it's another to make it stick with you long after playing. I don't have the possessed or psychopath traits when I say I give this a brilliant rating. The musical score is fabulous, but can get quite repetitive as the same two songs play all the time in the vanilla game. 
with one song playing in the main menu. The DLC and various community mods remedied this issue, but I'll get to that later. The visuals are nothing to marvel at, but are certainly a step up from other strategy games simply utilizing two-dimensional maps and interfaces. It's interesting to see the little sprites of medieval knights walking across Europe. I'm happy to say that I give this a- wait a second. I just had a thought. What if the knights were rendered to scale? And that they're literally giants trampling the world underfoot? By God. This can only mean one thing. Paradox Interactive are all weeaboos. This isn't another than the secret's origin story between Attack on Titan not yet revealed to the public. In all seriousness though, I rate this section as good. I'll just say off the bat that the interface is incredibly well realized, despite being the icing on the incredibly complicated function cake of the gameplay. It really draws you into the worlds and cultures you are playing within. The options also are accommodating to lower end systems, although frankly the graphics of the game aren't too demanding in the first place. Still, it shows that Paradox actually cares about who plays their games, and doesn't just cater to those 0.001% of gamers who are career politicians, or have graduated from West Point. I give this section a great rating. And I'll be honest with you guys, Crusader Kings 2 is one of my favorite strategy games ever. This is partly due to the game itself, and mostly because of the awesome devs and extremely welcoming community. The DLC, when put all together, makes for one of the best strategy games on the market, and perhaps one of the greatest grand strategies ever. The price for the base game also seems just about right, at least when I bought it. However, the official DLC often seems like it should have been included in the base game, instead of being offered in staggered releases for relatively high prices. I understand the thinking behind such releases, but I also think it better suits those who bought the game when it was initially released, and less so those who are buying it later on. The latter customers will be intimidated by the gluttony of price tags, and might get the wrong idea about the franchise. Despite this rather minor issue, the modding community is fantastic. Some mods that jump out include the one which completely reworks the map, characters, and diplomacy of the game and changes it to the Game of Thrones universe. Another one extends the timeline and adds additional bookmarks, adding much more playtime to an already time-consuming game. It's truly something to marvel at, and sets the benchmark for big gaming companies to improve their interactions with their customers, and to promote the creative expansion of the product by the community. I'm really confident with this next writing of Brilliant. So, the moment you've all been waiting for. Stock audio drumroll, please. The ultimate rating for Paradox Interactive's Crusader Kings 2 is... Great! Paradox Interactive has proven yet again its mastery of the grand strategy genre with this monumental release. It's also one of their most popular games, and rightfully so. The gameplay is smart, the interface beautiful, and the community is nothing short of phenomenal. The only things weighing the game down from a brilliant rating include its sheer complexity and a bit of price gouging, but these are insignificant if you're already into the grand strategy scene. I personally give my full recommendation to buy the game. Crusader Kings 2, you've just been baked. Did you like this video? Leave a like! And leave a funny and or insightful comment in there just for the hell of it. Please subscribe. Every new subscriber equals a new reason for Charlie and Nathan not to kick me out of Nathan's basement. Also, watch their Let's Play videos. From what I can hear through the wall of my under the stairs Harry Potter bedroom, they seem like funny guys. Hope to see you next time. Ciao.
keep me away from your pet cat. Nickel Power Part 1 is baked.